everyone and welcome back to the channel today's video is really exciting because it's gonna be my first tutorial video on processing astrophotography pictures so uh, today you're going to learn about how to process an image of the moon by taking a video so the whole technique of of planetary imaging is also called lucky imaging which basically involves taking really short exposures or long videos uh, with high frame rate to to fight the atmospheric seeing and get a sharp picture so the whole technique is really simple uh, so I use a camera called the ZWO ASI 224MC which is actually a dedicated astronomy camera uh, which is which means is designed for taking pictures of space uh, through an optical telescope so you don't actually need a camera like that uh, if you're a beginner you can use a phone uh, or a DSLR the, the main goal here is to really record a video and process it uh, by, by choosing the best frames in a video and stack all of them so that's how it really works uh, so let's hop onto the computer so that you can learn more about it all right so i just hopped into my computer right now and here are some lunar videos i took with my five and a half inch telescope uh, and my planetary camera the ZWO ASI 224MC so this is a capture of the Chicard crater which is right here it's a 200 kilometers wide crater and it looks uh, elongated because it's located in the limb of the moon so the very edge of the lun lunar surface uh, the, the side that we don't see well uh, compared to the rest so uh, the video file turned out very nice uh, this was captured at a frame rate of 100 FPS so I'm just gonna open the auto stacker to, stacker to uh, right here so in order to open your file you obviously need to click on the top here so what we're gonna do is select our file here and uh, we have a preview window uh, over here so I could just reduce the size so make sure uh, that in the image stabilization option uh, everything the settings are set to surface so the software should know that uh, this is a video of the lunar surface up close and I'm gonna set it to improve tracking so if your video has a lot of uh, jiggliness or uh, vibrations uh, this can help a lot and I'm gonna set it to cropped instead of expanded uh, to get the maximum detail uh, the noise robust is set to 6 so depending upon your video you can set the noise robust um, but I like to set it at 6, uh, it's the sweet spot. So I'm just gonna analyze the video right now. So we're gonna click on analyze right here. So what the software is gonna do now is it's gonna analyze uh, the video basically, go through the whole video and find out the best frames and the baddest frames. So this this should shouldn't take a while. Uh, so let's just wait and see the result. Okay, so the software has analyzed the video and here are the best frames of it. So you can see a graph here. So uh, the the curve here on the top of of the line here indicates the best of the best frames and the curve below indicates uh, 
uh, the worst frame so I'm gonna stick to the best ones so about we have about 687 frames to work with so I'm gonna stack about 85% of the pictures you see right here um, which means uh, you're not if you were to stack 100% of all the images then you're practically stacking the bad ones as well um, so I'm gonna keep it to 100% uh, which definitely helps um, so uh, I'm gonna keep it in RGB align uh, to remove chromatic aberration and now moving to the side window here um, we are going to set up the alignment points so depending on your video footage uh, you might be want, be confused on the size of the alignment points so if your video footage has a lot of noise uh, and a bad bad frames then in that case uh, it's rec recommended to keep the alignment points uh, really large and if your video footage has a lot of good frames uh, and a very good quality then keep uh, you essentially want to keep it to uh, smaller in size so something like 16 24 32 would work out well um, so in my case uh, I'm gonna keep it to 48 and so I have about I have about 1227 alignment points so uh, make sure that you're set to multi-scale for all the alignment points so that they don't overlap each other so the next thing you're gonna do is move to the side window and click on stack which is right here so now the software is gonna stack the data so depending depending upon your video this might take a few minutes or so so try it with a sh short video so that you don't have to wait for too long so i'm gonna leave this running for now and get back all right so we're done with stacking so uh, let's just look at the final stack so we stacked about 85 percent of the best uh, 687 frames and this is how it looks so yeah not particularly impressive because this is just the fire uh, the beginning stage of post-processing so uh, here comes the fun part and that is sharpening your picture um, so for that I'm gonna use another software uh, called Registax uh, 6 so this is a free software for uh, wavelet sharpening, uh, basically, which basically means sharpening your pictures. Uh, so I'm gonna load up my file. There it is. So this is how the stacked image looks. Uh, obviously, it is not sharp. So in order to sharpen the picture. Uh, we're going to go towards straight towards the wavelets bar, which is right here, where my cursor is pointing at. So what we're going to do first is click on sharpen uh, first. So the sharpening currently is set to 100. Uh, so you want to increase that to about 120. Uh, so that's how I like to keep mine. And uh, if you want to do some noise reduction. Uh, you can keep the, sh the denoising to about 5 so next thing we are going to do is uh, pull the slider build right below uh, the options up like this so and what you get to see is a sharp image so the whole process you see is called deconvolution which basically means uh, increasing the sharpness, sharpness of your image uh, by using 
layers instead of sharpening, just simple sharpening. Let's just get a zoomed view of it. And I'm going to click on do all function. Um, and as you can see, it's really, really sharp. Um, I'm pretty happy how it came out. I'm just going to zoom out slightly. Um, so, even though it looks pretty sharp, uh, I think it's a bit overkill. So, I'm going to reduce the sharpening slightly. So the preview right here you see is around 82.8. So I could reduce it further. And I think that looks good. So I'm gonna do this for the second layer, uh, layer two, uh, but with different settings. The sharpening is set to 100 and denoising. I'm not gonna denoise the image further. That looks sharp enough, I guess. So I'm gonna denoise it even more. And more importantly, uh, I want to remove uh, any kind of stacking artifacts in the image. So uh, you have an option for called deringing, uh, which basically involves to remove uh, any stacking artifacts. So uh, these are called ringed artifacts, if you like. So you have it for the dark side and the bright side. So I'm going to do it for both. Keep it up to 52. I guess that's roughly the same. And yeah, so that did work out. And I guess the image looks sharp enough. So here's a brief look to it. Hope you can, hope you can see it right here pretty sharp uh, and what's more interesting is you can even see some of the quite smaller smaller craterlets right here so these are some of the tiniest craters uh, uh, inside the crater so the crater is called Shikard which is 200 kilometers in size so you can think of the crater uh, being 200 kilometers uh, about the size of a city, which is really cool to look at. So, yeah, we're pretty much done in sharpening the image. So, I'm gonna save the file. And the next part you can do is uh, post processing. And this is not something you need to be. Uh, worried about uh, you could just uh, leave the image as it is uh, but I'd like to process this a bit further uh, because there are some things I'd like to fix in, in the image so I select my file um, so this was a PNG file so first thing I'd like to do is scale up the image so in GIMP uh, where, uh, you have the option to uh, increase the resolution of your image so in order to do that uh, I'm gonna click on image right here scale image so I'm gonna inc set the resolution to about 3200 uh, so that that I can get a much higher resolution uh, rather than a pixelated image you would have otherwise so this looks pretty good to me and secondly what you can do is bring down some saturation and the reason you want to do that is to uh, get rid of any kind of chromatic aberration uh, so this is something I'd like to do right now um, and you can bring out bring down some of the brightness uh, I guess that's too dim. And so yeah, uh, you could also do a bit more further. You, what you can do is sharpen the image. Uh, so this is unmasked sharpening, and I don't want to do this for mine because I think this is about as sharp as it can get. Uh, anything further would probably be too sharp, uh, and it would be pretty unrealistic. 
I just like the natural contrast of this image. Uh, it's visually beautiful and I think uh, it is sharp enough to be, you know, a good image. So we're pretty much done with uh, processing the, t the image. So uh, what I'm going to do now is just going to save up this image as a 16-bit uh, RGB file. So hope you guys found this useful. Uh, if you have any questions uh, about the tutorial further and uh, or anything about astrophotography, then uh, leave the leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see what I can do. So until next time, thank you all so much for watching. Uh, so I wish you all clear skies, and, and I'll see you soon in my next video.